Enjoying the seas and earth below With the sun, the moon and stars Cry out in praise If the God of endless glory of the Lord and to all our online viewers, we trust that you're going to experience God with us this morning. Would you please stand with me? In Psalms 22, we have the encounter where David 
sort of complains to God that he's been praying for so long and there's been no answer to his prayers. But in the third verse, there's a very important phrase that he used. After complaining about all of that, he said, But God, you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. And this morning, God's going to be enthroned on our praises. And you know what's so powerful about this? Read the rest of the psalm. David has an encounter, a prophetic picture of Jesus dying on the cross. And you know, we were blessed. We are blessed with a Psalm 23, such a well-known and, and loved psalm. And to me, the only difference was David encountered Jesus. In the Old Testament, he encountered Jesus and he was able to write the psalm that says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And this morning I believe that each one of us that may be going through something and saying, God, when am I going to get an answer to my prayer? God's saying, will you encounter me in your praises? Will you lift me up in the midst of what's going on? And I will show you what I can do. So let's raise his name up high. So let me just pray for us. Father God, I just thank you right now that you are always worthy of our praise, God. You're always worthy of our worship. And this morning we come to you with hearts and arms wide open, Father God. And we declare that you are Lord of all. And we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you. Raise our hands. Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up, hearts open, wide as we Your name high. Hands up, 
Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We praise your name. We glorify you, Lord. Who of you can remember the day that you got saved? 1983, September. God came and touched my life. I want us just to take a moment and thank Him for that day. Because we're not the same anymore. We're not what we're supposed to be yet, but we're not the same anymore. So let's give Him praise right now. Father, we thank You. We thank You for our salvation, O oh God. We thank You that You reached deep into our hearts, Lord. When we were in the miry pit, O oh God, You raised us up, O oh God. And this day we thank You. This morning we thank You, Lord. And because of that day, Lord, You've used us to touch many other lives. And Lord, our desire is that You'd use us to touch even more. So we thank You that we can honor and worship and praise You with all our hearts. And we give you glory right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for our salvation. Amen.
right now. As we were singing, I just felt God saying, will you believe me right now? For something that you're looking at and it just looks like this is not going good. In fact, it's almost a dead situation. And I just felt God saying, will you believe me this morning? That my name is above every other name. Because at my name, every knee bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So we're going to repeat that right now and, and say, Lord, I believe you in this situation right now. I believe you for that family member that I've been praying for for years to come to know you. I believe for that wayward children, the prodigals to come back to you. So right now as we sing this, believe him, trust him to break through the situation that looks impossible right now in Jesus' name. Is under 
to Christ is broken down. <clears throat> and so we want to exalt Him in our lives, in over, over this city, over us, the church, over our homes, over our families, our marriages, our children. There is power in our praise, power in our declarations, power in the words we speak in agreement. So come on, declare this with me. And say, in the name of Jesus, the name above every other name, Jesus, you are high and lifted up. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. You are the Creator God. You are high and lifted up. You reign from on high. And we welcome your Lordship over the church in the city. Jesus, you are Lord over East London. You are Lord over our homes. You are Lord over our marriages. You are Lord over our children. 
You are Lord of our schools. You are Lord of our institutions. King Jesus, come and reign. Come and reign. Come and declare it in the name of Jesus. We renounce every lying spirit, every unbelief. In the name of Jesus, we renounce every witchcraft, ungodly words, ungodly prayers, ungodly rituals, every agreement with the enemy. We renounce it in Jesus' name. Jesus, You are Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords. Establish Your reign over our lives and the city in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. Jesus, establish Your reign. Come on, You are high. Declare it, it's warfare. Come on, this is warfare, this is warfare. Praise breaks strongholds. Come on. exalt you. Jesus, thank you, Lord, as we exalt you. Everything that's not of you is broken off our lives. We break off depression. We break off unbelief. We break off every heavy burden. Come on, I just feel we need to declare for some of us, we're carrying heavy burdens. Let's break it off our minds, our hearts. Come on, say it in Jesus' name. We break off every heavy burden every fear, every depression, every lie, every unbelief, every hopelessness, out in Jesus' name. Lord, right now we shift the atmosphere over our lives. Jesus, you are high and lifted up, high and lifted up. I just have this impression of the Lord coming to remove heavy burdens taking off heavy burdens. Stop carrying things that belongs to the Lord. Cast it off, cast it off, cast it off. His yoke is easy, His burden is light. And if you're carrying something that's heavy, it's not of God. Thank you, Lord, you restore our joy. You restore our peace. You restore life in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. It's really saying there's some of us carrying hopelessness. And the Lord is saying that is not of Him. Thank you, Lord. We release hope, hope, hope to every heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, just say it. Let it be to me according to your word. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you for joining us this morning. Great to see you. Just uh, let's greet somebody around you. Come on, say hi. Welcome at uh, Show for East London. Welcome to those online. Great to have you with us. Good morning, everybody. Lovely to see you. Uh, we had an awesome first service, so we are in, uh, in a good mood. Um, and I trust you're going to have, uh, yeah, just enjoy the, the rest of the service. If you're visiting us for the very first time, welcome to you. Um, a special welcome from me. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, we just have a, a little pamphlet um, and a, a card that you get to fill in your details on. Is there, if you are here for the first time, is there anybody here uh, for the very first time this morning? You can quickly raise your hand in the air. Promise and Usher, hello, welcome to you. Anybody else? Welcome. A few of them there. Uh, just keep your hand raised until uh, an Usher has just got a little... A brochure to you. That's it. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> Lovely to have you. Uh, as I say, just fill in your details on the card in front there. You can drop it off at the info table, um, and then uh, we will get in contact with you, and we will also give you a voucher for a free coffee this morning. Uh, that is awesome. Okay, just a few, a few things. We, on Tuesday, this last Tuesday, uh, we had the launch of the Firefold Ministry um, Academy, uh, the East London campus, and it was an absolute hit. It was awesome. Who was there? Yeah. Woohoo! Shout at me, rather. Don't give me your hands. I'm blind. There we go. Awesome. Very cool. It, it was really, really great, and I want to encourage you um, to come along. Um, I can guarantee you that the only thing better than this last Tuesday will be this Tuesday. Okay. Amen. So come along. Uh, it's, it's really, really cool. If you, if you are interested in our small groups as well, our, our life groups, uh, these are the groups that meet all over the city um, in houses. We are bringing all of that together. Okay. So if you usually meet in a small group or you're keen to get involved, uh, we are bringing the Firefold Ministry Academy and our small groups into one venue. Uh, so we will still meet together. Um, but if you would like to get into a smaller community, which we really, really encourage, um, then please do sign up for that too, um, and you will be assigned to a group which will meet here on a Tuesday night. Okay, it's going to be great. So as I say, please, please do come along. Okay, then we're a church that, that believes that salvation is not the ultimate goal of this life. That's, that's not what Jesus only died for. Of course, He paid the debt for, for our sins um, so that one day we can be in heaven. We can be reconciled with the Father. But he also came that we may have life and have it in abundance here and now. If, if Jesus just died for us, he would never have sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to be our companion, to be our guide. Um, so I want to encourage you if, you, if you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, if you are not acquainted with him, come along on, on Wednesday, um, and next week Wednesday, to our life encounter. This is an introduction to, to Jesus and the, and the work that he did, um, and an introduction to the Holy Spirit. Okay, I want to encourage you, we cannot do this life without the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent him to be our, our, our guide, um, so come along and, and get acquainted with the Holy Spirit again. Okay, this is really an excellent foundational course, um, the first of, of many others. Uh, we have four of them, um, and our second one is Home Encounter, and if you would like to become a member, which happens at our, our Home Encounter course, you must do Encounter 1 to Life Encounter, okay? So just keep that in the back of your mind. If you would love to become a member here, and a mem membership is a prerequisite uh, for leadership, so we want to encourage you to, to come to Life Encounter and then Home Encounter. Okay, awesome. And then just linked with that, we have our water baptism happening um, this Sunday thereafter, Sunday the 25th of Feb, uh, and that is always great just to, to see people um, ha make that step of obedience, uh, make that commitment to the Lord in front of friends and family, and it's just a beautiful worship service and a lot of cheering and clapping, um, so come along uh, to that too. And if you, if you feel that that's your next step, um, I want to encourage you to sign up for that. Uh, let's be obedient to, to what God is calling us to. Okay, and then we have a, um, 
Chili Jordan. Uh, he uh, is a pastor, was a pastor at one of our show, couple of our shofar churches. Uh, he has an amazing, amazing anointing on his life to grow churches, and he has a real heart for the youth. So he's now moving into a full-time ministry role um, with the youth. Uh, so we are going to have him here on, on our Friday night with the youth, and then he will be with us on Sunday too. And so it's really going to be a, a great time, a great weekend. I want to encourage you guys to, to get your youth there on Friday, and then also just come in and sit under his ministry on Sunday. That's the 23rd and 25th of February, the Friday and the Sunday. Uh, and then if you usually do church online, um, you will maybe you have seen that we are no longer on Facebook in terms of our streaming. Uh, we are streaming directly to, to YouTube now. Um, so if you're usually uh, tuning in via Facebook, please just hop over to our YouTube page, normal 10 a.m. slots, and you will find us there. Okay, awesome. That is it from me. Um, we are going to receive an offering. Um, so yeah, just before the ushers send the bags around, let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for, for the privilege of, of being able to sow into your kingdom, Lord. We thank you that uh, in this act of, of, of tithing, of giving, of, of bringing an offering to you, Lord, we remind ourselves that you are number one. Uh, you are first, Lord, and everything else is, is below you, Lord. Every, everything is below you. Your name is greater than anything else. So, Father, we, we thank you that we get to, to sow into, uh, into your kingdom, that it may be extended, and Father, I pray that our hearts will, will just be circumcised of, of every idol, Lord, everything that is competing for your affection, everything that is competing for that number one spot. Uh, we just lay it down at your feet, Lord, and we give, we give this offering to you, Lord. We give our finances to you, uh, and Father, we just pray that you will bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you, um, if you have even an iota of observational skills, you will have noticed that we have a big hole in our fence. Anybody see that? Okay, well, okay, some of you need to work on it. Over there in our, in our car park, we have a new exit, okay, at the bottom of the car park. So nowadays, from, from now on, Sunday, you will come in our normal entrance. You will follow the little yellow arrows, okay, around the circle, and then you will exit out the bottom gate, okay? We will, we will keep reminding you, because I know we battle with these kinds of things, but come in, okay, so don't, please don't come into the exit, okay? We're going to go into the entrance, and then out the exit, all right, awesome, thanks, and our parking guys will be there, please don't knock them over or flick them out, okay? Thank you, enjoy the Sunday. We're going to just play a, a video clip uh, from Life Encounter now. He was born like any other man. He led no army. He wrote no books. He died a humiliating death. The world tried to wipe him from history. But today, more than a billion people follow him. He is the most ridiculed, honored, hated, and loved figure of all time. Who is this Jesus? Join us at Life Encounter for a fresh experience with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Be empowered to live an overcoming life. Jesus above it all. Okay, the series, the part two today. We are all worshipers. Every human being on the planet is a worshiper. The atheist down the street is a worshiper. Everybody worships. The question is just what do we worship? Do we worship? A creator, 
or do we worship something else? And you can normally check, you can normally pick up what people worship if you follow their passions. What are you passionate about? Follow the passion, you'll find where the heart is. Follow the passion, you'll find where worship is happening. Okay, and so we see this in our country and all over the world. We see people passionate about sport. Here's a photo of a Springbok supporter. Go Boca! Woohoo! And then we have a unique kind of supporter. They stand out from all other kind of supporters. It's called a Blue Bull supporter. Now, a Blue Bull supporter, as I said, they are like no other. A unique breed. And they're extremely passionate about their rugby. And they do not mind looking like fools. Because they are passionate about their rugby. And so we see this all over the world. Stadiums filled with people. Here's a picture of stadiums. It looks like a worship service. People are like, yeah, my boys, my team, go. People are passionate about these kind of things. And then obviously, again, we have the Blue Bull supporters. We just take it a few notches up like no other. Hallelujah. And then we have people at church. People at church. Now, some churches are boring, given. Okay? Power of the Holy Spirit isn't at work, so it's like an hour feels like, oh, five, can I, when can I go home? It's, it's a challenge. <clears throat> but this guy, sleeping in church, like, bored to death, that same afternoon, in front of the TV, would look like this. Then next Sunday at church, back to church. Go back to church. Yes. Then in front of the TV. Yes. Passion. We all are passionate about something. We are wired with passion in our being. The question is, what are we going to be passionate about? Is it wrong to be excited about sports? No, it isn't. You are allowed to enjoy sport. You're allowed to be passionate about whatever you are passionate about. The question is, does it compete with your passion for Jesus? In other words, our passion for the Lord should transcend every other passion. So if you want to be like the crazy bull supporter, that's fine. But you need to up your game on Sunday. Next level, not like bored to death, because there's something's wrong then, okay? So we, we're talking about worship, we're talking about idolatry, you know, we're all passionate, but if we are not fully passionate about the Lord, our passions will lead us other places, and I shared that last week, that we tend, this is human nature, we tend to take God's gifts and we make them God's. We take the gifts of God and we make them our God's. We begin to worship the gifts of God. Uh, every good thing comes from the Lord, but we tend to, our hearts tend to begin to worship it. God blesses us with a child and then we become obsessed with a child or obsessed with a spouse, or obsessed with money, or obsessed with sport, or obsessed with exercise, obsessed with self, the human heart is extremely deceiving. We lie to ourselves, and the heart goes places, and then you find yourself worshiping another God. Okay, so this is, this is huge. This is huge. It's something we need to and so I'm trusting that through this series, we're going to realign our hearts with, with God and to worship Him and to be surrendered to Him and to expose those other things that might compete for our passion for the Lord, okay? So every good thing comes from the Lord, but we tend to 
the heart tends to begin to worship other things. Okay, so we're going to trust to, to, to reveal some of that. I mean, I shared last week as well that even when it comes to worship, we tend to worship worship. The, the vibe. My vibe. We all have our different vibe. Every culture has their vibe. And so it's so easy to begin to worship the vibe and not to really worship Jesus. It is what becomes a sing-along. We just sing, but we're not like, you're not worshiping. Okay, so we're going to look at that a bit. So uh, the last month or so, I, I was in a prayer meeting, and the Lord revealed to me that there are like three walls, spiritual walls around the church. Our church, the wider church, might be both. I'm not sure. And so these three things are three spiritual strongholds is what the Lord showed me. And I felt the Holy Spirit revealed me that the fear of man is number one. It is the biggest obstacle to see kingdom expansion. We tend to be more concerned with what people think than what God thinks. Okay, that's an idol. It's the fear of man. It's people pleasing. It's, it's another God. I'm so concerned about my image that I am not worshiping the Lord fully, okay? So you wanna, you wanna have a seamless, uh, 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 your, 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 what people see and who you are, you want that to be seamless. We're gonna get into that in a moment. Then secondly, the religious spirit, that is like, um, it's like, hey, you're religious, that's great, but uh, there's a disconnect between your heart and the Lord's heart. It's like a religious spirit is like, hey, it's great to, to, to go through the motions, you go to church, you sing your songs, but there's no real life change, and it lacks passion. The religious spirit despises passionate praise and worship, despises it, okay? Religious spirit is another spirit, not the Holy Spirit. And so the religious spirit like is fine, go to church, go through the motions, but just don't bring your passion to the table. Let your passion be somewhere else, okay? Religious spirit. Disconnect. A wall around the church. We, we worship Jesus, but we don't obey him, that kind of thing. And then thirdly, witchcraft. I felt the Lord showed me that there is an assignment of witchcraft against the church. So the enemy sends demonic spirits uh, to, to infiltrate the church, meaning people struggle with their sins and, you know, patterns of of sin and condemnation and shame and guilt and fear of man and whatever, like the demonic things that are sent to, again, it's a wall that keeps people bound, bound in shame, bound in guilt, bound by, you know, patterns of things. And I felt the Holy Spirit reveal to me that the, many of the people of God are hearing voices which are not the voice of God, hearing the voice of the enemy. And we're not even aware, we're hearing voices. We think maybe it's our own voice, but it's voices of guilt, voices of condemnation, voices of shame, voices that keep us bound. And these are these walls. And I, I saw the Lord breaking down these three walls. I saw like angels in the spirit with sledgehammers breaking down these walls. And that is what we're trusting for. The walls to come down so that the kingdom of God can move out. Amen. Breaking down the walls. And so last week, I, I also shared about this quote by A.W. Tozer, that if a thousand problems are solved when Jesus is given his rightful place, a thousand problems are solved when Jesus is given his rightful place. Okay, so that's what we're contending for, to give Jesus his rightful place and to not allow other things to push him out, other passions to compete for this number one, that Jesus, number one in our lives. Okay, so I want to help us give you a tool, give you a weapon with which we can break down idols and move into the presence of God. So last week we spoke about Jesus above it all, and then, so be in awe. Jesus above it all, the creator of heaven and earth, 
the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the great God over all the earth. That is who He is. He is exalted. He is seated on high. He reigns from heaven above. So our, our response is, be in awe, the fear of God, holy reverence for who He is, and that gives us eyes to see Him for who He truly is, because that is who He is. But when we find ourselves with other things, other passions, other things competing, we can find ourselves in a place where it just doesn't feel like He's so great and glorious. It just doesn't feel like He's exalted, that He's high and lifted up, and we struggle with unbelief and doubts and fears and, and a disconnect um, from the Lord. Okay, but a thousand problems are solved when we, when we lift Him up, when we give, his, give Him His rightful place. Okay, so we're going to trust in this message to help you Lift him up, okay? And so the problem that we have is the heart, as I said, is deceitful. It goes all different kinds of places. Okay, now look at this. Mark chapter 7, and we want to we wanna release some passion here today, so we're in the passion translation. And it says, Jesus replied, now it is, he spoke to the Pharisees, spoke to the religious leaders, and he said, you frauds and hypocrites. Oh, they must have loved that. You are frauds and hypocrites. How accurately did Isaiah prophesy about you phonies when he said, these people honor me with their words while their hearts run far away from me. They honor me with their words. They sing the songs. They pray the prayers. They say the right things. But they're just going through the motions. We sing the songs, we declare, maybe we say, but the heart is somewhere else. It's like, oh, can I, can can this just finish now so I can go home and go do what I'm really passionate about? You know, the heart is somewhere else. Their hearts run far away from me. Okay, religious spirit, idolatry, other things. Verse 7. Their worship is nothing more than a charade. It's fake. It is false. For they continue to insist that their man-made traditions are equal to the instructions of God. It's a charade. It is fake. It is false. It is like you are saying the right things, but there's a disconnect in the heart. Okay, that's what hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is I'm, I'm presenting something to the world, but behind the scenes, there's something else happening. Okay? There's an idol that has moved the heart away. There's compromise. There's sin. There's other things behind the scenes. But on Sunday, it's like, praise Jesus. You know, no, I, I, I have the fear of God on my life. So I would be terrified to worship Jesus on Sunday or to share his word like I'm doing. And I know there's compromise in my life. The fear of God will cause us to fully align the front of house and the back of the house. The back end and the front end. It's like you're going to, there must be seamless alignment. What you see in public is who you are in private. No disconnect. The disconnect means hypocrisy. The disconnect means idolatry. The disconnect means a lack of the fear of God. Jesus above it all, so let's, let's be in awe, you know? But when it comes to man-pleasing, it's like, well, well, we're looking good. Looking good in front of people, cussing my wife out on the way to church, and then we walk in here, blessed, 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 blessed. No. The fear of the Lord demands that we deal with the compromise behind the scenes. And this was Jesus' issue. This was his fight. It's like you hypocrites, Pharisees, and this is the challenge. Any one of us can find ourselves in that place. If we lack the fear of God and if we allow idolatry into our lives, our passions will go other places and will lead to sin and compromise. And then he says, another translation says, and that you worship me in vain. What does it mean? Powerless worship. Powerless worship. It's sing song, but no glory. Sing along, but no power. Sing along, but no glory, okay? If there's a disconnect. But I tell you, when our passion is set upon Jesus and we worship Him and praise Him with everything within us, if there's alignment, 
No compromise, no hypocrisy, just alignment with, the, with who God is, the, the awe of God resting upon us, then our worship becomes powerful. Now, I am really thankful for what God has done over the last three, four, five years in our church. Our worship, our praise is, is in another dimension from where we were. But I have good news, guys, there's more. Amen, there's more. Come on, say there's more. There's more. We can up our game because it, 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 it is powerful. And this is the, this is the weapon I want to share with us today. The weapon of passionate praise. Passionate praise pulverizes idols and launches us into the presence of God. Passionate praise pulverizes idols and launches us into the presence of God. So I want to unpack that a bit. But passion, come on, say passion. We are all passionate about something. What if we would all be passionate about Jesus above everything else? Passionate about Jesus. Okay, so there's a weapon the Lord gives to us. Passionate praise kills idols. So it's not only, I mean, I remember years ago when I, in the 90s when I became a believer, I remember I was a little bit too passionate about sport. And I would have, it would affect me. It was like, I'm like obsessed. It was 1990, so I would like 1999 World Cup, Rugby World Cup, I fasted the World Cup. You? Yeah. And so I remember it was the semifinals. We were playing against Australia. I was in the hostel, in the residence, the student residence, and I was in my room, and the boys were screaming. Yeah! And I was like, Lord, this is tough. This is difficult. Anyway, we lost. So I was, thank you, Lord. I wouldn't be able to survive the final as well. But I had to put, like, boundaries, because I know this is too much passion. It affects me too much. My emotional health, and over the years, I've, I've got a better, better balance now. I can enjoy the sport, but Jesus, much more. It doesn't affect me. Okay, so you have to manage those things. You have to, like, put boundaries. If you feel, hey, it's getting too much. It's like if you're depressed, if your team loses, something's wrong. You must be able to enjoy it, and your wheels don't come off. You're all, like, staring at me as if, like, obvious. <laughs> Obviously, Andre, we don't freak out about anything. We are stable. Yeah, maybe ladies, you got the, you're worried about the sale and you storm to the shop and they all sold out. No. If we become too passionate about other things, it affects us. And it brings a block between our relationship with, between us and God, it becomes a block. Okay, so what you behold is what you become. What you behold, what you are seeing, what you are worshiping is what you will become. It affects you. So look at this passage, Psalm 135. It says, for the Lord will judge his people and he will have compassion on his servants. So, so this judgment, is, God's judgment is merciful. It is gracious. For me, it's like conviction. It's like the, the Lord shines his light upon us. Say, hey, do you realize that your, your, your heart is strayed? Conviction. And then the Holy Spirit comes and convinces us of who we are in Christ. Conviction of sin, but convinces us of righteousness. Convinces us of who we are in the Lord. And so it says there, and he will have compassion on his servants. So he has compassion. The Lord knows our human state, that our hearts tend to go everywhere. It's like if, if God says, do that, then humanity is like, well, then definitely we're not doing that. We're going to do something else. That's the human nature, like rebellion. We're like, just if God says that, then we say no. Okay, so God knows, and he has compassion on us, and he wants to help us. He wants to shine his light upon our hearts so that we can lay those things down. I felt this last week, uh, prophetically, I felt this is a word for some of us, that the reason you are disconnecting from the Lord, the reason you feel disconnected from God, because there's an idol in your life. You have to lay it down. 
The idol is a block. The idol is an obstacle. The moment you lay it down, the moment you confess it, you bring it into the light, you speak to somebody, you humble yourself and say, hey, I'm struggling with this thing or I'm obsessed with this thing or this, whatever compromise in my life. The moment you do that, it is removed. Forgiveness flows in and you can reconnect. Okay? Because sometimes we're like, God, why are you doing this to me? I said, well, if you would just lay down the idol, we can talk, you know? So allow the Holy Spirit to shine His light. Verse 15, the idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. Now, this speaks of like a physical idol statue thing that they would worship. It says the work of men's hands, things that they built. Now, it can also mean that we can worship, worship the things we make, the wor worship the things we do, worship our work or our uh, achievements. We can Worship those kind of things. Then it says, verse 16, they have mouths, but they do not speak. Eyes they have, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Nor is there any breath in their mouths. Those who make them are like them. So is everyone who trusts in them. Do you see it? You become like the idol. The idol the false god, the whatever, it can be anything. They don't see, and we become like them. Spiritually, we become blind. We can't see the Lord. They are deaf. They can't hear. What happens is we, 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 we struggle to hear the voice of God. We become spiritually deaf. Can't see, can't hear. What, they don't have breath? What happens? We become spiritually dry and dead because of the idol. The passion is taking you to all the wrong places, and you can't connect to the Lord. Those who make them are like them, so is everyone who trusts in them. If we trust in the other things, you will spiritually die. You will disconnect. You will lose your way. So you want to trust in the Lord. You want to trust in Jesus. And one of the ways is to start to passionately praise Him. Now, Sonica said a few weeks ago, comparison steals your joy. I want to agree. Comparison steals your joy and it breeds idols. It's like you look at the people around, it's like, wow, well, you're blessed with what you have, and then you your nice car or your what, nice whatever or family or what, whatever good thing you have in your life, and then the moment you see but somebody else, that is nicer. Nicer house, nicer car. His wife looks prettier. She looks amazing. I think she actually like respects him. <laughs> and you're like, and the comparison then suddenly steals the joy. You suddenly you're not happy. Suddenly you're not content. Suddenly you're like, oh, this I'm not. You know, it, it breeds an idol, then suddenly you're like, but if only my business would be as big as that business, or only my, oh, my TV's only like 55 inches. He's got like an 85. I want an 85. I confess. I sometimes see people's 85s, and I'm like, Lord. But my wife put up a handbrake. I wanted to go bigger, and then she said, no, honey. No. I'm like, Ugh, okay. We have to push the couch forward. <laughs> Make it 85. Yes. Sit up, up front, up front, close. <laughs> but, but again, human nature, we compare. It's like we look at other things. Oh, that couple looks so, so happy. And then the idol breeds, and we compare, and our joy is out the door. And it breeds idols. It breeds idols. Don't compare. Compare is trouble. What should you rather do? Be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful for what you have. Make a point of being thankful. Celebrate the good that you have in your life. Celebrate it. Make every effort to be thankful and to, you know, it is so important to do it the right way. I mean, it's like, okay, this is Valentine's Day coming up, for those who don't know. Wednesday. <laughs> so date night for those who are in that relationship with that special somebody, for the rest of you, Jesus is your Valentine. Amen. 
He will not say something stupid and offend you. Praise God. But husbands tend to. <laughs> well, in my house sometimes. <laughs> so it's Valentine's Day. You go to the restaurant or you go somewhere. And then you just like passively go into the evening. Take out your phone. Read some news. You've seen those couples at restaurants sometimes, both on the phone. I'm like, oh, Lord, help them. Nothing to talk about. No, you don't come in passively. You are ready, men. Where do you start? Honey, thank you. Thank you. And now you're like, okay, list, 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 quickly. Go, go through the list. Thank you, honey, for everything you do. And you start naming them one after the other. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. You look so beautiful. So you move into praise. You start praising her for who she is. And the result is you lead your heart to celebrate. And you create an environment for intimacy. You can't come in passively to this relationship thing because I tell you the devil is also there. Valentine's Day. He wants to mess it up. He wants you to sit in that restaurant. You're all both staring to the ceiling while the other couples look so happy. And you're like, what's wrong with us? You came in passively. You must come in like a focus machine. Ready. Thankful. Then praise. Honey, you look beautiful. Just love this dress. No, you don't look fat. <laughs> you go through your list and you praise. You're thankful and you praise. You're ready. You're creating that beautiful environment for a heart-to-heart -heart connection. Sure. And some beautiful, glorious, wonderful things could maybe happen later in the evening. <laughs> because you're a man with a plan. <laughs> That's how it works. Thankful, praise, and then worship. <laughs> Intimate. Worship, that's how it works in relationship. That's how it works with God. You start over thanksgiving. You're thankful for all he's done. There's so much to be thankful for. You can be thankful for another day. Thankful for the life he has blessed you. We're thankful there's so many things, but we tend to focus on what is not. And it breeds idols. It breeds discontent. It breeds nonsense in our hearts. Be thankful. Stage six, load shedding. Jesus, thank you. It's not stage eight. <laughs> it could be worse. <laughs> We're thankful. There's so much to be thankful for. The gift of life, breath in your lungs, health. Maybe your whole body might be in pain, but your big toe is not in pain. Say, so Lord, thank you for my big toe, which is not in pain. And I thank you for the rest of my body to be healed as well, in Jesus' name. Start with the good. Start with being thankful. Amen? God is good. Amen. And so I also want to share a story from my sister, Yonella. So about two years ago, she was diagnosed with cancer. Cancer in her sternum, breast, and in the lungs. And it's a two-year fight. I remember two years ago when she came, it was just like uh, six months, seven, eight months after Kim, JP's wife, passed away from cancer. So I was like, yo, this is just horrific. And we prayed together. And I was like, I don't know, God. I'm just giving this to you. I don't know. And as we were praying, I had a word. I felt the scripture reference. And in the scripture reference, I, do you know what's written there? I went to look there, and it spoke something along the lines of long life. Yo, and I wept. I'm like, God. You know. So anyway, two years of treatments and prayer and trusting God. And so she went for scans this week. Not a trace of cancer. <laughs> Amen. Come on. God is good. We celebrate the moment. We don't know what the future holds. We are standing with her for lasting health in the name of Jesus. That the cancer will not return. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Amen? But we don't know the future, but we know who holds the future, so we can trust. But you can celebrate in the now. We can't be afraid about the future. We need to celebrate God, what God is doing right now, whether it's through medicine or it's a miracle or whatever. We are celebrating the goodness of God. 
Amen? Amen. Come on, let's just stretch a hand to her. I want to release life of her. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we celebrate what you're doing. We celebrate your faithfulness, God. We celebrate that you are good and you are the healer. And you've given us and you've given her eternal life. And so we rebuke every fear of cancer returning. We curse it at its root. It will not return in the name of Jesus. Long, healthy life to the glory of God. But Jesus, we declare that we will worship you no matter what. Because you're faithful. And you've given us eternal life and goodness and blessing. Lord, we thank you for joy over her life. Joy and peace. Thank you, God, that you can extend your kingdom to the glory of your name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we seal her by the blood of the Lamb. Healed lastingly, permanently to the glory of Jesus. Hallelujah. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Come on, give Jesus praise. But we, jo- we rejoice in the day. We rejoice in the moment. If God, there's something good, we're in. We give Him praise. Amen. He is good. So don't allow comparisons to steal your joy. Don't allow the enemy to bring in idols. Thankful. Thankful for what the Lord is doing right now. What you worship is what you will become. What you behold is what you'll become. So be thankful and then praise Him with everything within you. Okay? So yes, Psalm 100. Passion revealed. I encourage you, praise yourself into His presence. It says there, make a joyful shout to the Lord. Come on, say shout. 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 It's a command to shout. Say, oh, but it's not my personality. No. There are times when we shout. If you can shout at the TV for your sports team, you can shout for Jesus in church. Amen? Shout. Joyful shout to the Lord. All you lands, all nations, shout to the Lord. Number two, verse two, serve the Lord with gladness. Serve Him with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Come before His power in singing. Come before His presence with singing. Verse 3, know that the Lord, He is God. He is God. He created us. It says, he, it is He who has made us, not we ourselves. We don't worship ourselves. We worship Him. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. He loves us. He loves you more than you can imagine. And then here comes the key. Verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Praise launches us into the presence of God. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Verse 5, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. There's a key. So you might feel like, Far from the Lord. You might feel like burdened, depressed, challenged, joyless. You might, that might be all, all that you feel. So where do you start? Be thankful. Start making lists. Lord, thank you for this. Just begin. Cold. You're not feeling it, but you just start saying it. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you that you saved me. Thank you, Jesus, you died at the cross. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this good thing and this good thing and this. God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of the Lamb. Thank you that you've torn the veil, so I'm welcoming your presence. Thank you for your mercy and your loving kindness and your goodness. God, thank you. I'm not feeling it now, Lord, but I'm thanking you. Thank him. Lead yourself. Lead yourself. That is the entrance into his courts, the gates. Be thankful. Now, Sonica does it so beautifully. She makes lists. Every term, she makes lists. 
Now we know about the list, huh? She, but this is a different list. This is not a list she attacks. This is a list that she attacks with. She makes lists of thankful things. Things that she, thank, thank you for what you've done, Lord, this term. And then by the end of the year, we have like a family time, and then Sonic is like asking me and Vian, what are we thankful for? <laughs> just I have to rack my brain. <laughs> and then she just brings out the lists of the whole year, every term. I'm like, I forgot about that in the first term of last year. That, wow, that, yes, the Lord did that, and he did that, and he did that. And then he just stirs up. So many good things in one's heart, like, yes, thankful. Make lists. Lead yourself. Make it part of your lifestyle, your habits of be thankful, be thankful, be thankful, and speak it and declare it. And you're driving in your car to work. You're like, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to work. Thank you, Lord. You love my boss, although he's an idiot, Lord, but I, <laughs> Lord, I, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Uh, you love him. Lord, you know, we want to be, we want to, we want to complain, we want to find fault, we want to be, you know, and, no, just, just God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this boss that I have an opportunity to learn how to love a difficult human being. Thank you, Jesus. There's always something beautiful that we can see in every challenge. Come on, say it, I'm going to be thankful. Amen. That's how you step into his presence. And then you begin to praise him. Jesus, you start declaring who he is. It can be in song. It can be just in words. Make your life just start to declare who he is. So the thanksgiving shifts your heart. Then you begin to declare, Lord, you are the king of kings. You reign from heaven above. Lord, I thank you that I'm seated with you. And you just start declaring who he is. Speak it. Sing it, proclaim it, and then when, as you are launched into his presence, then intimacy. Jesus, I love you. You're my everything. Jesus, I adore you. Thank you that you cause my heart to come alive. Jesus, I thank you. In his presence, intimacy, communion with the king of heaven and earth. It's glorious. The Lord has called you to live there, to dwell there, but there's a process you need to go through because sometimes we want to get to that, but we're not feeling it, so then we do nothing. No, you have to start thanks, thanksgiving, then praises, and sometimes you have to get up and do it passionately, although you're not even feeling it yet, but you just, you start praying, you start praising, you start declaring, and then when you're in his presence, you can say, Jesus, I love you, and then you feel it. Then he changes you. Then his presence floods in and changes you. Are you seeing it? Passionate praise pulverizes idols and launches us into the presence of God. So the focus is not only just on reducing the passion for other things. The focus is on upgrade your passion for Jesus and everything else will find its place. I've seen this in my life. It's like the more passionate I get about Jesus, how less fulfilling the rest of the world becomes. I'm like, yo, everybody loves this movie, but I'm like, man, Jesus rocks. <laughs> Nothing compares to him. Okay, so praise, passionate praise. So apply this to your relationships, apply this to him. It is powerful. It is powerful. Praise yourself into his presence. You see, we are wired to praise. It comes so naturally. It's like the box, World Cup winners. Since October last year, it's like everywhere, every short and video and whatever, it's like the Boca. It's amazing. And so we all like, go Boca. And we celebrate Sia and Faf and everyone and Damien and everybody's calling their kids now by these names. We're like, yes. And why do we like to praise? Because they are like an extension of us. Their victory becomes ours. It's like, oh, praise God. South Africa, we're not completely clueless. And every time we win something, we're like, come on, we can do this. We are victorious. We can, we can, we can win on the world stage. And so we praise them comes so naturally. 
And it shifts us. It shifts the atmosphere, even our nation. When the box came back and they were traveling through the streets and the cities, you could feel a joy and an excitement in our nation as we were like, oh, praise God, we're all not completely useless. And then we think of load shedding again. They say, oh. <laughs> but it does something. Just praise in the natural shifts the atmosphere. It reminds us because it's like we they're an extension of us. We're like, yes, we can do this. Because, you know, in our culture, there's such a, an unbelieving negative break ourselves down culture in our country. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And you go to the U.S., they are amazing. And they believe they are amazing, and then they do amazing things. But this, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a complete different culture. It's like they have this, it's almost like a redemptive element in their culture, like we believe. And we need that. And so when these things, when there are these victories, we get a glimpse of, hey, maybe we're not completely pathetic. Praise God. And then we have the Drikas, UFC champion. Yo, I never watched UFC. And then when Drikas, I'm like, I'm watching it every, I watch all, all these previous fights. And I'm like, oh, blood, blood. Hitting the heck out of everybody. And then when Drikas wins, yo, the country celebrating again because he's an extension of us. It's like we club the hell out of that other guy with the blood running down his face. We're like, yes, don't mess with South Africans, huh? Hello, Vieti, what was Vieti? I couldn't figure out what on earth is that, why? I had to go Google, Lavieti Vatos Vieti. They don't know what we know. I had to go Google that to figure out what that is. But part of it is true. But this is, again, it's like this victory becomes our victory, just on a natural level. But don't mess with us South Africans. We will clap you. But then it goes beyond that in the spirit. If we think of what Jesus did for us, you know, with, with, the, the, world, with the box, the World Cup, and with Drickus and whatever, and, you know, like an extension of us, you know, it's like we celebrate, we rejoice in the victory, that's great. But Jesus takes it into a completely different dimension. His victory actually becomes our victory. He doesn't only hang on the cross and he claps the powers of darkness into oblivion. He doesn't only shed his own blood to wash away our sins. He doesn't only overcome death and hell. He says, I include you in my victory. I open the door for you. I have paid the price so you can come into my victory. And my victory becomes your victory. And then when you and I begin to praise Jesus, when we begin to exalt Him and all that He has done, that victory tangibly, spiritually, and in reality floods into our environment. It's not just a joyful, the box one. This is like it shifts the atmosphere. It shifts the environment when we praise Him and declare who He is and what He has done becomes our victory. This is so powerful. In Him, we clap every devil. In Him, we see sickness leave. In Him, we see our sins washed away. In Him, we see depression leave. In Him, we find joy and peace and life. What you behold is what you will become. He is peace. Amen? The kingdom of God is not eating or drinking. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. His victory becomes ours. This is the power of praise. Amen? Come on, say it. The power of praise. Passionate praise when we declare who He is and what He has done. It shifts the atmosphere. It releases life into us. It launches us into the presence of God. We need to make this our lifestyle. You start with thankfulness. You're moving into passionate praise. And then heart-to-heart -heart intimacy, connection. It is beautiful. It is glorious. So here's five things. The power of passionate praise. just want to touch on five things. Number one, he launches praise, passionate praise. 
launches us into his presence, as we touched on. Launches us into his presence. That's why you can't start off with necessarily Jesus, I love you. It's like, just declare who he is. You're doing warfare. You're doing warfare so that you can step into his presence. Number two, it breaks strongholds. It breaks strongholds. Demonic powers are broken. I remember the story, Reinhard Bonnke is a famous evangelist who's passed away. He would do these massive crusades in Africa, like millions of people would be there. And then one story, there was these occultists, witchcraft people that came against him, and they, they could see in the spirit realm, and he would be on stage and and they would say, in the spirit, they would, they would curse him. And then these fireballs in the spirit, not in the physical realm, in the, in the spirit realm, they see these fireballs of demonic power being thrown against him. And then Reinhard would just shout, hallelujah. And then these fireballs just couldn't touch him, couldn't affect him. And they turned to Jesus because they said, there's another power here. There's a vastly superior power here at work. The power of praise. Come on, say hallelujah. 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 And it, it puts the focus on Jesus. It is putting the spotlight on Jesus. It is saying he is worthy. And as you proclaim it, it shifts the atmosphere. It breaks strongholds. Number three, shifts the atmosphere. Shifts the atmosphere. It, it causes heaven to come down. It causes the kingdom of God to flood in. It's powerful. His victory becomes ours. Number four, it releases the life of Christ. Releases not only into us, but to those around us. We have so many stories, people coming through these doors, unbelievers coming into church, and then in worship, having an encounter with Jesus. The atmosphere. The king in the house. Number five, it awakens, ultimately awakens our love for God. Praise moves us into the place of intimacy. And one of the best examples is, is King David. Now, he was a warrior. He would kill Philistines in their hundreds. He killed Goliath. He was this man's man. But he was a man after God's own heart. He had this love for God. He would be in the 10 plus years that he was persecuted. He was in the wilderness, and he would just praise he would praise the Lord. He would like, Psalm 63 would be like, Lord, my flesh, my whole being yearns for you. He loved God. And God loved his worship. Okay? So David. And so then we see in this one, I'm ending with this passage, but we see this with David then bringing back the presence of God, the, the tabernacle. And so they, 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 they worship him, and he would dance before the, the golden box with the praise of God. He would twirl before the box, and, and as they would bring the, the presence of God back into Jerusalem. And then his wife saw him dancing around like an idiot, and she despised him. She was ashamed of him. She was like, you're making a fool of us before, in front of the people. She was more concerned with what the people thought than what God thought. God loved it. And then we pick it up in 2 Samuel 6, 21. So she confronts him and tells him, like, you, you, you look like a, one of those useless guys. And so David said to Michael, it was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father and all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord. So he's saying, I wasn't dancing in front of the people. I was dancing before the Lord. I don't have a sock with what the people think. I am praising the King of Kings. I am praising the creator of heaven and earth. I adore him. And that's why he would do that. Verse 22, and then as David would, he would say, well, I'm going to up my game. He says, I will be even more undignified than this. And I will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maidservants of whom you have spoken by them, I will be held in honor. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. She was barren because she was afraid of man. She wanted to be dignified. Dignity is not a fruit of the Spirit. Joy is. Joy is. 
Joy is. There's a problem if we are willing to look like idiots at the rugby stadium or soccer stadium, but we are afraid of looking like a fool at church or wherever else for the Lord. There's a problem. Then it's not the heart of David. It's not the heart of a man, a heart after God. It is in fear of man. It is dignity. The religious spirit hates passionate praise and worship. So I'm like, let's up our game. Let's get every devil out of the house. You have to get over yourself to worship him. We're not people pleasers, we're God pleasers. We are in awe of who he is. He is great and glorious. He's worthy of all our praise. May there be no competition in our hearts, in our passion for the Lord. May our ultimate passion be for him. That's what I want to call us to. Let's take up this weapon, this weapon to pulverize idols and to launch us into the presence of God. There's more. Amen. Come on, say there's more. There's more, there's more, there's more. Eyes on him. Jesus, we desire you. You are the answer to our nation's problems. You are the answer. And we need you, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Please stand with me. Passionate praise kills idols. Come on, let's lay down the idols. Let's lay down the other things that compete with our passion for Jesus. Hallelujah. So what can you be thankful for? You should be able to make a list. There's so much. Get out of comparison. Get out of comparison. Get out of anything that is keeping you from His presence. Every idol, anything that's keeping you out of His presence. Just deal with the idol, lay it down, confess it, bring it to the light. Hallelujah. So I want to feel things before we're going to just praise the Lord together. We're gonna, you're going to have an opportunity now to put into practice looking like a fool for Jesus. We will have blue bull paint outside as well. Jesus paint. <laughs> but a few things. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want to call some of us forward just to come and deal with some, some things. If you struggle with comparison, you feel like the enemy is stealing your joy, I want to call you forward. If you're struggling with something in your life that you, is too important, too passionate about something, you want to lay it down before the feet of the Lord, I want to ask you to come forward. If you are struggling with the fear of man, that you are more concerned with what people think than what God thinks, I also want to call you forward. I want, I want to pray that God would just break these things off our lives. In Jesus' name. Or anything else that speaks to you and you need prayer, then also just come. So just right now, come forward. We want to pray for you. We want to bless you. We want to see the kingdom of God come. Hallelujah. Lord, come and light the fire, light the flame. Come on, for some of us, there's, there's something you need to lay down at his feet. Who cares what people think? Who cares what people think? Only matters what he thinks. I want to please the Lord. Promotion comes from God. Come on, let's get every idol, every other thing, every competing thing out of our lives. Lay it down at his feet. Jesus, we honor you. Lord, we want to be in awe of you. We want to be astounded at your greatness. Lord, we don't want to be like the idols who can't see, who can't hear, who has no breath, no life. Lord, we thank you for breaking, for freedom. Break it off our lives, every comparison and every idol, every competing passion. Like the fire, 
like the passion in us to praise you, to praise you, to praise you more than anything else, more than anything else. In the name of Jesus, King Jesus, come. Take up your place in our midst, God. We exalt you. We exalt you, Lord. Let your victory flood in. God, I pray that not one of us would allow an idol in our lives to lead us astray. Jesus, may passion for you eclipse every other desire, every other passion. Lord, I pray, Lord, for thanksgiving to flood into our hearts and into our lives. No comparisons. Just thankful for what you have done and what you are doing. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, we honor you. God, we honor you. God, we honor you. Come on, let's just sing then. Let's praise him. Name above every other name. Throne above every other throne. Glory above every other glory. Spirit above every other spirit. Jesus, we exalt you in this house. May every idol, every other thing be cast down. And Jesus, take up your rightful place in our lives. Jesus' name. Come on, let's worship him. Let's praise him. Come on, declare it. Set your focus on Jesus right now. Don't go through the motions. Don't go through the motions. We, we worship. We're praising now. Every other kingdom is under your kingdom. You are high and lifted up. Jesus, Jesus. Every other power is under your power. Every other glory is under your glory. And every other spirit is under your spirit. You are high and lifted up. We enthrone you, Lord. You are high and lifted up.
Yes, Lord, we exalt you. We honor you. Yes, Lord, we honor you. Lord, we pray for the shift in our lives, Lord. Lord, we ask for a grace to flood into our lives that where we are pouring out our passions in wrong places. Lord, I pray that those doors will be shut. Those passions will be reduced and our passion for you will eclipse every other passion. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are high and lifted up, Lord, and we pray that we will experience you, see you, hear your voice and experience your glory in our midst. Lord, be high and lifted up here, now in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So I want to lead us in a prayer. And I'm going to lead us in a prayer of, of, of bring freedom from the fear of man. To break down this wall around the church, the fear of man. People pleasing. I want to break that off. And then I want to pray just that God will help us to break down every idol and to up our passion for Him. So if you want that, then pray this prayer with me. You can just open your hands before the Lord and turn your heart to Him. Expect a miracle within you now. And just pray, say, Father God, Lord, up my passion for You. My passion for Jesus. I renounce the fear of man people pleasing I renounce it in the name of Jesus I am not a people pleaser I'm a God pleaser Lord I renounce every compromise in my life every idol Lord expose it and set me free in the name of Jesus Lord fool me with thanksgiving. Fill me with passionate praise as a lifestyle. Every day, right through the day, God help me to see you for who you are and to proclaim your praises continuously. Lord, pulverize every idol and launch me into your presence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray this Lord I renounce dignity I will be more undignified for Jesus thank you Lord just want to pray for you so Father we thank you Lord for this grace upon us to be passionate praisers of God. Lord, we commit this season, this week, even into your hands. Lord, come and shine your light upon our hearts that we may lay down other things and upgrade passion for Jesus. Lord, I pray that we'll live a lifestyle of thanksgiving, of praise, passionate praise, undignified praise in our homes or wherever. Lord God, come, let your kingdom come. In the mighty name of Jesus, we break off every fear of man. And I pray, Lord, that we will live passionately for you everywhere. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, let your kingdom flood in. Let your kingdom come. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Let's exalt Him. Jesus. Come and do this in us, Lord. Come and do this in us. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. We're going to be praying with you guys here in the front. If anybody else needs prayer, you're welcome to come forward. And then for those who haven't been on to come Tuesday night, it's just epic. If you want to grow in the boldness of the Lord, join us Tuesday evening. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Have a great Sunday.